I guess you guys are a little ways into this. How's it gone so far? Good. We, you know, we've been able to scrimmage, um, I guess, four or five times now. So, um, gotten out at some short scrimmages, but um, you know, just being able to see kind of first impression with the the offense and the, the strike throwing ability of the pitchers, and they're really just working fastballs the first week. Um, so, just it's been, been fun to get out and just get moving around again. Yeah. Yeah, I think the I think the the great thing is is the guys kind of understand part of it as well now is that we're going to have a locker room full of new guys. It seems like, you know, you're going to have probably anywhere between 15 and 20, uh, maybe more than that in some years like this year. Um, and I think just having enough veterans in the in the locker room that just do a great job of welcoming the new guys in and just understanding that that's such a big piece of the puzzle and I think the next step for us is just the um, you know, not just being having great chemistry and, and being good friends, but making sure we're great teammates as well. Where does that leadership piece start with this team? Yeah, I mean, we had some guys coming back um, that voiced over after the season that, hey, I, I want to be more vocal this year. And, you know, you hear that from guys from time to time. But um, I think we've got some younger guys um, that, that had a big role last year as freshmen. Some maybe not has a bigger role, but um, that are just – really wanting to do whatever we can to help us get to where we want to get to. So that's that's really what it takes, honestly, to have that leadership. It's not force. It's not, well, I want to I want to be a leader because I want people to follow me. It's I want to be a leader because I want to win. I want to I want to do whatever it takes to win. And I'm going to show my teammates that, that I'm willing to do what it takes to win. And then I'm going to hold my teammates accountable um, to do the little things that it takes to win. Where are you guys at health-wise right now? Um, Pretty good. We've got a few guys that'll be held out um, for the for the fall. Just nothing major injury wise. We have some guys coming back. Um, a couple Tommy John guys coming back that'll probably won't be available for the fall, but will be uh, full go for the spring. So uh, we do have quite a you know we got quite a few pitchers. I think we got 25, 26 pitchers on the roster. So um, we still have plenty to, to work with this fall. The pitching piece of it. I mean, how does Rob kind of challenge those guys? Um, you know, coming into his new role and also just kind of the way last year unfolded for you too and, and maybe what, what you have available in terms of roles and things like that. Yeah, I think maybe some guys are seeing the difference between Fun Rob, who is the player development guy, and, you know, Coach Rob is maybe a little bit different. But at the end of the day, the, you know, how much he cares about the players is pretty evident. Um, you know, we got a nice – uh, pitcher unification the first week or so where they were able to uh, do some challenging uh, calisthenics together as a group um, and kind of help build that bond right away. Um, again, just little stuff that I've seen uh, Rob do through the years with the pitchers. It's just, again, he talks about the KISS method. Um, he's got, he's done, you know, he's tweaked some things through the years, but I mean, he's very, very convicted about how he goes about his business and uh, the things he's asking his pitchers to do on a daily basis. It's very repetitive and very consistent. And really at the end of the day, I've never known a great player um, uh, that, that played the game for a really long time at a really high level that wasn't consistent, that wasn't very diligent in how they went about their business. So I, I would say that's really what he's trying to bring to the staff. The competing with the fastball, um, what do you learn about a pitcher like when, you, when you have to do that? You learn if you can command the fastball, number one. Um, now, command and control are two different things. You know, we, you know, we, we, we've done a good job of not, of, of not walking a lot of guys, but the fastball command, I think, for some guys needed to get better. So can you add and subtract off the fastball? Can you pitch to both sides of the plate? Um, can you elevate when you need to? Those type of things, I think, is what you see. And then we're going to incorporate the changeup the first couple of uh, weeks as well, where it's just fastball changeup. So they've got a, you know, a lot of times that's their, you know, their second or third best off-speed pitch. So, uh, again, just trying to figure out a way to compete without having your best stuff. And really, that's, that's what being a great pitcher is, is because you're not going to have your best stuff most of the time. Velocity? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it just kind of depends on how some guys come back. I mean, Trey Fromm, you know, before his injury was 95, 98. You know, he throws really hard. And uh, Will Rizzo probably um, touched 98 last year, but he probably pitches better at 92, 94. You know, so I wouldn't say velocity is everything. We do have some freshmen that have all thrown so far. And, 
you know, most of the guys that come into college, I mean, you're going to be low 90s, um, you know, and hope to, to maybe get a little bit better as you go. So, um, you know, we've got some left-handers that maybe don't throw as hard. But, um, yeah, I don't – I think, again, I, I, really at the end of the day, if you don't throw strike one, um, it, it doesn't matter how many strikes you throw, honestly. If you don't throw strike one and you can't get ahead and put people away when you, when you get ahead, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot, a lot of guys out consistently. Well, it sounds like you really like your team. Can you get a sense of what maybe this group's identity will be as you guys move through the rest of the fall? Yeah, what we've seen so far is we, we kind of call them junkyard dogs already. I mean, we've got quite a few guys that have a chip on their shoulder as far as maybe maybe some JUCO guys that have been, they were D1 kickbacks or, you know, Division One transfers. Um, a lot of the freshmen have come in and made a really good impression just being hungry and eager to, to work. Um, you know, we've challenged these guys pretty good for the first couple of weeks. I mean, we right, got right into it, and, and uh, you know, they've, they've kind of asked for more. So um, it's been a – it's again, we've, we've meshed really well really quickly. Um, they're a really coachable group so far. And, uh, you know, really at the end of the day, we're trying to be the toughest team in the country. I mean, we talk about that all the time. And, um, you know, the teams that we've, that we've been that way with, we've won championships with. So that's, that's our challenge. Yeah, I mean, I think we probably knew that the home run was going to be a factor last year. I don't know that we realized it would be as big a factor as it was. I would like to be not as reliant on the home run. Um, again, in any perfect scenario, you're going to have a you know a combination of strength and, uh, strength and speed. You know, so um, are we going to have some guys that can run? I think so. I mean, we've we went to the junior college route to get a, a few really good runners. Uh, Brumball is back and healthy. Uh, he's not throwing quite 100% yet, but I mean, he's another guy that brings that element to the table. Um, and then we've still got some pretty physical guys in our lineup. And if you look up, you know, what you really would like to be as experienced every year without having to turn over your offensive personnel too often. And we are, we're pretty experienced. If you look in the outfield, we've got, you know, Garrett Anglin's a fourth year guy. Uh, Cole Evans has been in college baseball for five years. Um, add a few junior college guys in there. Uh, Clay Bradford, who's in his fifth year in college. They're, they're pretty physical guys. And, uh, you know, Josh Karen's in his third year. So, you know, we've got some guys with quite a bit of experience. That's what you want, obviously. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's got a chance to be pretty diverse. Where do you see Brumbaugh fitting into the picture defensively? Yeah, he's playing second base this fall. Um, I think, you know, last year he would have figured probably more heavily in the outfield just based on having a first and second rounder in the middle infield. Um, but he was, a, he was a shortstop in high school. Um, he's played a really nice second base so far. Like I said, minus the throwing, we haven't really seen much of that from him just coming back from the shoulder surgery. Um, he could he could factor in the outfield as well, but I think we have some other options out there this year. Um, so... He's a table setter. I mean, he's a guy that he's he really didn't get to he didn't get to play any summer ball uh, this summer. Still coming back from his injury and his first at bat um, against live pitching, he hits a line drive through the middle. You know, he's just a guy that has a knack for for finding the barrel, and he has a ver very very high baseball IQ uh, based on his upbringing. His dad's a coach and was a professional player, so um, just a, a guy we're excited to get back on the field. Yeah, I would say, you know, from, like I said, on the pitching side of it, you know, what's the command look like? I mean, are we going to be able to to narrow down to, you know, can the number be 12 guys that you can count on? If, you, if you're if you there, then you're pretty good on the mound. If it's nine, I've had plenty of good staffs that had nine guys you could depend on. But, you know, what, what what's the ability to command the baseball look like? What's the ability to throw secondary pitches for strikes look like? That That's really the thing. Um, we're trying to find on the mound is just how many consistent guys that we have that can do those two things. If you can do that in college baseball, if you can get ahead and you can throw off-speed pitches for a strike, you're going to be tough to deal with. So, uh, And again, from the offensive side of things, to me, what, what really we need to find is just guys that are willing to play their role and guys that are because if because if we have a bunch of guys that are willing to play the role we're asking them to play, those guys will help us win because they'll be you know bought in to compete to the best of their ability on game day. So those would probably be the main things. You, you mentioned getting the more experience in the lineup, but I mean, you also added a lot of experience to seemingly the back end of the bullpen. Right. How, how much of an emphasis was that in the off season between what you added late? Yeah, I mean, you, you have several guys, you know, Sanders from UNO, um, 
he's our type of guy. He's a bulldog. And, and again, just seeing him pitch with his fastball right now, slider, he threw the slider 80% of the time. And, uh, you know, he's he can go compete with his fastball if he needs it as well. Kyle Freilich was a closer, Northwestern State. I mean, he's a guy that he could probably start, honestly. He's very, very green in his pitching career. He was a two-way guy in junior college, went to Northwestern State as a two-way guy. Um, so, you know, those guys have experience. Honestly, more than anything, we – we just wanted to get some guys that we felt like could do the things I just mentioned, you know, can command multiple pitches for a strike, competitive. Um, and then we've got some high upside guys, too, that, that we haven't seen yet uh, that I think are really going to be able to help us at the front of games as well.